Hey all, Brie from the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I have got a gift for you this holiday season. If you love the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I mean love the No Guilt Mom podcast, then tell us about it. Leave us a review and you can be entered to win a No Guilt Mom gift card. All you have to do is leave a review, take a screenshot, and then simply go to noguiltmom.com forward slash review to enter our giveaway for a free No Guilt Mom gift card. Simply for telling us what you think about the podcast. It is amazing. But don't delay. Get right on this as we're going to be giving away that No Guilt Mom gift card on December 21st. So get right on over and visit noguiltmom.com forward slash review. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom podcast. I am your host, Joanne Crone, joined here by my recuperating co-host, Brie Tucker. Why, hello, hello, everybody. How are you? You have that nice little like rasp in your voice. The, Do I? Do I have that sexy yeah. smoker voice? The, whole, the like, sexy hey, smoker voice. How are you? Hey. It's voice brought to you by Do COVID. I know. <laughs> Man, I lost my Matrix COVID dodging card. Like I had I been know. dodging this sucker for two years and it hit me hard. <laughs> It's like you wanted the CDC to come to your house and be one of those people who they investigate to why have you not gotten COVID yet? But I I know I thought it was special. Apparently I'm not. (laughs) I'm knocking on wood for I'm like, I feel mine is just around the corner because everybody I know is getting it like you got it. My father in law got it like, oh, my goodness, it's just going everywhere right now. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. And in one fell swoop, it took out our summer vacation plans, uh, oh. my week with my kids and our whole household. Like it was just crazy. Yeah. Stupid COVID. Yeah. Stupid but, COVID. But you did some awesome things while I was sick with COVID. Well, I it's funny because my interview today with Jennifer is doesn't have you because the morning we did the interview, you're like, I can't talk, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> like, that and I had a that and my temperature was like 103. I was a little delusional that day. <laughs> Not the yeah, best. it wasn't a good interview day. But Jennifer Ross Camp, she is now a two timer guest on the No Guilt Mom podcast. She's one of my very good friends in the online business world, and uh, she's the mom of nine kids. So she has great decluttering tips to share. Because if it works with nine kids, I figure we could definitely make it work with our two or three. Exactly. Exactly. So enjoy our interview with Jennifer Ross Camp. This episode of the No Get Mom podcast is brought to you by our masterclass, Five Mistakes That Are Keeping Your Family From Helping Out. If you have not gotten a chance to take this yet, go on over. You could pick a time that works for you. It is a way that you can improve your relationship with your kids and get them to help out more without the pushback. I lay it all out for you. Go on over to noguiltmom.com forward slash registration dash the number five dash mistakes and sign up for a time that works for you. And we also have a link for you in the show notes. Now on with the show. You want mom life to be easier. That's our goal too. Our mission is to raise more self-sufficient and independent kids. And we're going to have fun doing it. We're going to help you delegate and step back. Each episode, we'll tackle strategies for positive discipline, making our kids more responsible, and making our lives better in the process. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom Podcast. So, hey, Jennifer, welcome back to the No Guilt Mom Podcast. You are officially a two timer. <laughs> Hey, thank you. That's exciting, right? <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. We, I like, I always tell Brie, we got to change that name. And then we're like, no, we're not going to change it. It's going to stay the same. I don't have a problem with it. So it's fine by me. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, you have a very large family. Tell, tell our listeners about your family. I do. So I am a mom of nine um, and I homeschool my kids. Um, as well. And I'm actually getting ready to put on another hat. I, my oldest daughter got married last year and I'm going to be a GG is what Ah! I, what my official title is going to be because my youngest is only four. And I'm like, Oh, I just don't know that I can wear the grandma tag. I just Mm -hmm. don't know. So, and I love thinking about being a GG and all things GG. So that's happening in my life 
in the next couple of probably six weeks or so. So that's going to be a very whole, soon. whole other dynamic. It is very soon. And it's, it feels kind of surreal, but everybody tells me it's awesome. And everybody tells me I'll figure it out when I get there. So I'm like, okay, great. I can do that. I'm winging yeah. it. You're winging it. It's going to be great. I cannot wait to hear like all the stories of you being a Gigi. I think they're going to be fantastic because yeah. something I know about you, you have the best stories and things that like always happen to you. And I mean, when you have so much going on in your life, I think you do have a lot to draw from, but just your storytelling ability makes me laugh all the time. I always say life is never boring. I just said that yesterday. I don't remember what we said that about, but something, there was a catastrophe just last night. And it was, we were with someone else and I just can't even remember, but I says, well, I always say life is never boring. And she's like, well, that is true. That is true. Uh, but like something I've always wondered though, about how you, I mean, I, I really hesitate using the word, how you keep it all together, because I know you, and it's not about really keeping it all together. It's kind of more of like the managing catastrophes that I've seen you do. Like they always come up. So like, what advice would you give people with kind of being hard on themselves about all of these catastrophes? Like, especially from you where you have all of these catastrophes to choose from all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is actually kind of what has become my renewed passion and what I'm actually passionate about um, in terms of like kind of what my mission is in this online space and in, in this world in general. And that is I think the hardest thing for women and moms is number one, it's, it's assuming that perfection is attainable and mm -hmm. it doesn't help with all of the pretty Instagram and all of that stuff. And so really what my, my mission is, it's to help, um, show women and moms that that perfection isn't achievable. It isn't, it isn't even something that you want to try to attain. And if you think anybody has it all together, like they're lying to you, right? Like, um, it's a matter of understanding. They're totally lying. <laughs> yeah, let's just be honest. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that's where most women set themselves up though. And, you know, they feel like, oh, this shouldn't be happening to me. Or they feel like everybody else has it all together. Or they feel like, what am I missing? Or what am I doing wrong? And we need to just be done with all of that. And we need to understand that we're all here and we're going to find our own path and we can learn from each other and we can come together and we can support each other and all of that. But we all are going to be finding our own way. And that is exactly what we should be doing. And, um, it's about managing the fires, right? You're never going to be able to put them all out. It's just a matter of how well you manage them. And, you know, and then you just, you know, that you've done the best you can with what you had to work with at the time. Yeah. And I think that has a lot to do with women in their homes as well, because I've heard from many people that they're afraid to invite people over to their houses because of the mess like around. And honestly, like sometimes I'm afraid to invite people over to my house because my, my two kids leave socks everywhere. Jennifer, they leave socks everywhere. Like, I don't know what the issue is. I thought there's a sock under my couch right now in my office and I don't know how it got there. So yeah. I, I, I wish that I could help you with that one. I know. <laughs> oh, cause the sock monster is in my house as well. Can you imagine how many feet we have in our, like, imagine the socks. I may have threatened more than once to pack up and we live in Michigan, right? I may have threatened more than once to pack up all socks and no one who lives in this house will ever have socks again. Oh my gosh. I've done that. But I've gotten to that point. I've also gotten to the point where I've thrown probably a hundred socks away. Oh. Pairs, not pairs, whatever. I had had enough of trying to pair the socks and mostly my kids don't care if they wear them mismatched. I don't care if they wear them mismatched, but we just had so many of those where I'm like, these just need to go away. There's just too many. We need to start with a, we need to have a smaller pool that we're working with. My son has actually made it part of his style to wear mismatched socks because I have him do his own laundry and he does not want to match the socks. And yep. he's like, it's okay. I'll just wear two different ones. And I'm like, yep. well, if you're okay, I'm okay. Yep. Just like with laundry too. I went through a phase where, um, I didn't require my kids to fold their laundry. You don't have to fold it. Just put it away. Just put it away. I don't care if it's folded. And you know what, about a week later, they all started kind of folding their laundry simply because, I told them, you don't have to, it's up to you. It doesn't matter to me. I think you'll look nicer and we should be folding our laundry. And that's, you know, kind of how you, how we can look the most presentable, but if you don't want to, that's fine. I just need it out of the living room and out of my living spaces and out of my sight. And I need it in the right place in your room. Beyond that, I do not care. 
Yeah. And I think that's a really good thing to bring up. And it's great that you're, you're so honest about that too, because a lot of us see these images of like the perfect houses and all the laundry put away and all the rooms neat <laughs> when really they don't see the other side of the camera where everything's stuffed into the corner to get that perfect Instagram picture. And that's something you've really been trying to fight against this Instagram perfection. Yeah. Though I also think you really have some good skills good skills that you're teaching about organization and decluttering. And I really want to pick your brain about those and get into them. Yeah. What do you say to people? Like they have their houses a mess. There's junk piled up everywhere. There's like boxes in their hallways. Where do you start? My son is playing a game right now on his computer where he's a thief and the cops are after him. So I'm so excited about this new app, Give As We Grow, where instead of being the quote unquote bad guys, kids are practicing giving back. That is so cool, Joanne. I really wish that there was something like this when my kids were younger that got them excited about giving back to others and helped them build a better understanding of what it really means to volunteer. Give As We Grow is the first of its kind free educational mobile app for children ages 8 to 11 that teaches kids via fun, service-focused mini game quests to tap into their unique talents and interests to help others. And did you know that studies show that there is a biological connection between generosity and happiness and that volunteering improves people's physical and mental health? I mean, kids who volunteer typically do better in school and are less likely to engage in risky behaviors. And that is something that I think we all want for our kids. Ready to spark a new movement in generosity? Find and download Give As We Grow for free in the App Store for Android and iOS. And for resources for the whole family, visit giveaswegrow.org. Hey all, Bree here, and I wanted to share one of my favorite gifts to give during the holiday season, a StoryWorth book. It is the most amazing gift ever. StoryWorth is an online service that lets you create a special and unique gift of someone's story. I've given StoryWorth books to both of my parents, and it has been their favorite gift, hands down. And did I mention, it is so easy. StoryWorth emailed my parents questions every week that I handpicked from their massive list of questions that they have. All my parents had to do was open their email and answer them. That easy. I asked my dad questions like, did you have any rules that you set for yourself as a parent, which you immediately broke? And he did. I even asked both of my parents, are you more like your mom or your dad? And they shared a lot of really amazing qualities that I didn't know about my grandparents at the time. Then at the end of the year, StoryWorth compiles all of their answers, puts them into this gorgeous book that covers everything. My parents love showing us their books and I personally love getting a chance to read them. With StoryWorth, I am giving those I love, a thoughtful and personal gift from the heart that preserves their memories and stories for years to come. Go to storyworth.com slash NGM and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash NGM to save $10 on your first purchase. Well, I think the best thing to do is to choose to start with something that is going to accomplish something, give you a sense of relief, give you some breathing room, give you that sense of that sense of pride and, and relief, you know, about the hallway maybe being cluttered or whatever it might be. But also you need to start small enough that you experience a quick win relatively early. Because the thing about clutter is a lot of times they're big, time involved you know, processes. And most of us are too busy to have all of that time involved and, and we know it. And really we get those projects done by just one little block of time at a time. But when you are feeling overcome or overrun by clutter to think about taking on a big, a big time consuming project like that is usually just going to feel so, you know, weighted down on our shoulders that it's hard to move forward. And so that's where I think it becomes really helpful to say, choose, make a good choice, but make a choice with something you can make a significant impact in, in a week or less so that you oh, visually see, you know, you see what you've done and you say, and you step back and you, and it makes you smile and you say, I did that. Right. And that makes you actually a little bit excited to do a little more and keep that momentum going. And, um, when you feel stuck, it's all about getting that quick win. Cause it's hard to recognize if it's not a quick win, it's hard mm -hmm. to see progress. If it's, if it's overshadowed by everything there is to do still. I love the idea of a quick win. When you say a week though, I, I would feel for me, like I need a little more instant gratification than the week. Like I would need 20 minutes. I need like something that I can see. 
else well, I get overwhelmed as well. Yeah. Yeah. I would say in that type of situation, what I love to do is um, my kids have their own laundry room and I love to, on Wednesdays, they're all out of the house. We homeschool, but on Wednesdays, they've got classes all day that they do outside of the house. And so my kids laundry room, they do their best with it. They get their laundry done, but they're not great at keeping it. You know, a lot of times there's various stages of clean and dirty laundry in there. Right. And it's upstairs and I don't go up there very often, but I do like to go up there on Wednesdays when everybody is gone and I set my timer for 10 minutes and I do it twice. And I just step into that laundry room and I just, I don't, I just go and start. And it is amazing how much of a difference you can make in 20 minutes. It doesn't sound like a lot of time, but it is a lot of time. If you just go in there determined and just start working. Oh yeah. That timer thing is a great thing to use with kids too. And I, especially when you as an adult and your kids have a really short attention span, because it's so much easier just to look at the timer and be like, okay, like this task is very overwhelming, but I only have to spend 10 minutes on it. Yep. Um, my sister came over and my son was like resisting doing the dishes. And she's like, come on, we're just going to go over here. We're going to set this timer and we're going to load the dishwasher and I'll load it with you. And I was so surprised to learn that she living like a hundred and some miles away from me used the same strategy I did without us even talking about it, yeah. but managing the, the short attention spans, which I think all everyone in my family has. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, it's that, and also it helps eliminate your likelihood of becoming distracted or mm -hmm. becoming bored or becoming, I just don't feel like doing this anymore. Right. It's like, it's a doable amount of time where we can we can stay the course very, you know, it's not that much time. It's not a big commitment. It's not a big ask. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely not a big ask at all. Uh, what is the second thing that you recommend after having that quick win? So once you have the quick win, what I think is important after that is to, again, choose from there. You need to choose something that is going to allow you to, um, experience something that you, you pick and choose your battles, right? You pick and choose something that is ideally in a, in a main living space. So that, because those are ten, tend to be the places, the places we see all the time, like mm -hmm. in your kitchen, in your living room, uh, that's what we call them here. I don't know if that's like your sitting room, right? Like where yeah. the TV is and where we you have a living room, it. family room that here. Oh, all right. So yeah. So you would choose a room like that where you would, um, it's a space that you see a lot. And you just, again, choose your space wisely and you go in there and you don't think. A lot of times with clutter, we, we tend to wanna think, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what does it make sense to do first? And after I do that, does it make sense to do this? And what am I gonna do with all of the clutter? And we sit and we think, and we try to find the perfect strategy and the perfect formula. And we think, and we think, and we think. And before, before we know it, we've thought so much that now we don't wanna have anything to do with it. So when you choose an area that you're going to do, in a, what I suggest is a main living area that you just don't think, just like I talked about with the laundry room. Mm -hmm. I don't think I go in there. I set my timer and I just start working. I could think about, should I separate the boys clothes and the girls clothes? Should I worry about this pile over here? Or should I worry about that pile? I don't do that. I literally walk into the room and pick up what's at my feet. And I go from there. Yeah, I think these both tie back into this idea of perfection. And I think that's what trips a lot of us up. Like we feel like we need to be perfect. If we need to do something, it needs to be the most perfect thing we have done. So we try and think of a plan instead of going for it. And I think of Top Gun. Have you seen Top Gun Maverick yet? I actually did. You I'm did? a child in the 80s, of course. I was oh, yeah. ready to go opening weekend. <laughs> oh my gosh, me too. I loved it. And one of the things that uh, Maverick told his students was, you know, you don't think in there. You go uh -huh. in, you maneuver your plane and you don't think. So we could take Top Gun lessons and apply them to decluttering. <laughs> exactly. I mean, can't Top Gun lessons apply to so many things in life? <laughs> I feel the need, the need for speed. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, but it really, That's exactly it. it. It all goes back to that. It's really perfection. And maybe do you think, I mean, this could just be me like philosophizing or whatever, but a lot of the clutter in our house could exist because we have this idea that we have the perfect use for an object down the road. And that's why we cannot decide where to put it right then and why everything accumulates and is out in our living areas. Yeah. Yeah. I call that perceived value, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, 
this might have value someday. And the last thing I want to do is have to go out and buy it again or say, oh, shoot, that's right. I got rid of that. But I can tell you, I mean, doing, I mean, I do massive declutterings. I have to with this many people living in the same space. And I don't know of a time where I have done a massive decluttering and come across a time where I said, oh, shoot, I wish I would have had that, right? Yeah. Um, we can make that case about anything. And, and then, yeah, you can get into the psychology of it all. Am I making that case because really I don't want to get rid of it? Is it because I'm maybe emotionally tied to it or there's memories there, you know? So am I, am I telling myself I'll use this again, just because I really want to hang on to it, you know? So, so it's hard, you know, it's, we, our brain can do funny things with us and it can convince us of a lot of things that maybe aren't actually true. Well, like going deeper into the psychology end of things, I think like the perfection thing has one thing to do about it, but I also think it's our money blocks and our money difficulties because we cannot get rid of things that we have like spent money on because we fear will be wasteful. Yeah. Like I find that comes to me all the time. I see it with friends who like try to get rid of like all of the stuff that they're accumulating because they don't want it to go to quote unquote waste. Yeah. Yeah. One of the key things to keep in mind when you start having that dialogue with yourself is by you hanging, like that money is spent, right? Like by you hanging on to that object, let's say you spent 50 bucks on it. By you hanging on to that object, you're not getting that $50 back, right? Mm -mm. Um, And and then you try to think about everything else that that $50 item is costing you, right? We don't think about that sort of thing. We don't think about the fact that it's taking up space on the shelf or it's taking up space in the cupboard, space that we could be using for something else or maybe not use at all, but maybe it would give us a little bit more room inside that cupboard so that we're not always so aggravated when we go in there and we're looking for something because everything is overstuffed, right? Mm -hmm. And so then it's costing us time because you're having to unpack the cupboard before you can find what you're looking for. So that $50 item now becomes kind of expensive, much more expensive than that $50 simply because you're hanging on to it. But that scarcity mentality, right? Especially if you've ever lived through a time of scarcity, which I, you know, Joanne, I have lived through that. So I Mm -hmm. do understand this and have lived and battle with that scarcity mentality. So that is definitely something that is real. But also what I find helps me a lot with that is, like I said, just to think about the fact that I'm not getting that money back by hanging on to it. And if it's not serving me anymore, it's likely even costing me something like time, aggravation, all of that. Wait, how do you feel about selling the stuff that you have and like the amount of kind of like giving away the time it takes to post something on like Facebook and the actual monetary value that you get from it versus just say donating it? That's a great question. Um, I will say you brought up really good points and points that I think it depends on what phase of life you're in Mm -hmm. um, and, and what your financial situation is. I will say that when we were in our tightest times, it was worth it to me to spend the time. I looked at that kind mm-hmm. of as my job, right? I'm kind, I'm almost kind of like earning a wage um, for the time that I spend, um, but the money that I'm taking back in. And one of my mm-hmm. rules too, like during that time of life, especially was one of the things I love to do in my home is seasonally decorate. Like, you know, I love to have spring decorations and summer decorations and fall and all of that. But I only like the same things for once, you know, maybe two years. And after that, I'm bored with it. And I would like some new stuff. Well, during that time, we did not have any money for new stuff. And so my rule was, well, I can sell all the stuff that I have. And then I can use that money to buy all the, all the new stuff. And, it, and I did that it, that way for years. But now I'm to the point where because money isn't quite as tight as it was back then, now my time has become more valuable. So you almost kind of like have to weigh which is the bigger price tag. Is it the bigger price is the bigger price tag my time? And if that's the case, then you would, you know, probably go more the donation route or is the money the bigger price tag right now? And then maybe you should do some of that a little bit more. But it is a huge time investment to do that sort of thing. And usually, you know, you're selling it for pennies on the dollar. So you really do need to calculate is it really worth it? And then also remembering how, when you donate it, how much you, you know, what is causing you this stress can actually be a blessing to someone else. And that can make it easier to let go of as well. 
I like that. I like that thought of thinking that this donation could really help somebody else. And even though like you're really stressed and you may feel wasteful giving it away or that you are like not making good enough use of your resources, just the thought of happiness in another person. That's a great thing. And weighing like weighing your time versus money too is an important question to ask. Yeah. We're hitting that time of year where my brain gets so overloaded in December that I look for anything to make life easier. And I have to say, Brie, that Green Chef is one of those services. Yes. Green Chef is there to take away the dreaded, oh my goodness, what are we going to eat for dinner tonight? You can eat clean all holiday long with over 80 weekly meal options each week featuring things like quick and easy, protein packed, calorie smart, or my personal favorite, the keto options. And you don't have to lose track of healthy eating habits during the holidays because every Green Chef customer gets a free session with one of their registered dietitians who can walk you through how to make clean eating work for you, which is very cool. And I have to say that I have been loving their recipes lately. They put things together I have never thought of. This week, we're trying the lemon basil caper pork with sauteed cauliflower, bell peppers, almonds, and feta cheese, my favorite. Their recipes make it so easy to support my wellness goals without skipping on flavor. For Green Chef's best deal of the year, get $250 off with code NGM250 at greenchef.com slash NGM250. That's greenchef.com slash NGM250. And don't forget to use that code NGM250 to get $250 off. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. This message is sponsored by Greenlight. It is so hard to raise kids who know how to manage money. Brie, right now, my kids are all about earning money for presents. My daughter wants to get presents for all of her friends, and my son is doing a secret Santa with his friends. Oh, I hear you. And if you're looking to raise kids that are financially responsible, we have got a lifesaver recommendation for you that you need to check out. It is Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app made for families that gives kids and teens an easy and fun way to gain financial literacy all while giving parents peace of mind. You can send instant money transfers, automate allowance, and even keep an eye on kids' spending with real-time notifications. Meanwhile, your kids can begin their journey towards financial autonomy by learning how to save, invest, and spend wisely. So sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash NGM. That's greenlight.com slash NGM to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash N-G-M. Yeah. So we, we have the three things. We have two of the three things that we got through already before going sidetracked into psychology, which I yeah. could spend all day in um, because you said choose one thing as a quick win and then don't think a la Maverick. Uh, yeah. What is the yeah. third thing? The third to thing do? Where we a, a lot of times miss the mark in a lot of things and with a, anything, a, a lot of different things that you want to get done. And that is you actually have to plan time into your week or into your day to, to work with this, whatever it is that you're determining you're going to do, whether it's 20 minutes or whatever it is, right? You actually need to say, all right, on Tuesday around two o'clock, that's when I'm going to shoot for that or Tuesday afternoon, right? Nothing is set in stone. And there are a thousand things that can happen in a day, but still, if you want to take action on something, you have to actually plan it into your day or your week somewhere. Because if all we do is say, oh yeah, I'm going to do that this week, right? <laughs> like it just kind of Goes, lingers yeah, there. It lingers. Mm -hmm. and it just kind of stays. Um, and so if you really want to be able to take action, actually planning a time that you're actually going to be taking that action and figuring that out ahead of time, rather than saying, well, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out when it works. There's a thousand other things you'd probably rather do. So mm -hmm. that will just kind of keep getting pushed out there. So yeah, um, I agree. Planning it, your week, planning it into your day. Huge. And as someone who sees undesirable tasks on her calendar and is like, nope, don't feel like doing it right now, <laughs> I can yeah. say that having an additional incentive during that time really helps like a glass of wine if it's in the evening or going out and uh, getting a Starbucks caramel macchiato really works for yep. me as well. Yep. Do you use any rewards like that if you don't really want to oh, yeah. do something? Oh yeah. I call those a task loop. Is That's actually what I call those. Um, so it's taking something you don't like and looping it around with something that you do like, 
So sometimes it can be something that you're doing simultaneously. Like you're talking about drinking a glass of, if you're talking about drinking a glass of wine during, or maybe it's your reward after, but like a lot of times I like to like listen to a podcast or a book on audio, or even just some eighties music or something, (laughs) Um, you know, it's, it's enough just to kind of keep me going forward and not really think about how much I don't like what I'm doing. Um, so I do that sort of thing all the time. And that can be, that can be huge. It's a way of kind of tricking yourself you know, into getting it done because you're doing something that you enjoy at the same time. So it kind of, you know, the spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down kind of thing. I like that you brought up the non-food rewards too, because my brain always goes to food rewards. And I often forget that there are other things I could be doing. Like I love listening to audiobooks and podcasts as well. And that's a great way to spend the time. And also when, do you ever get this with your kids? If you're doing a task like decluttering, like they will not bother you. Like, so if you want to get through an audiobook, if you want to get through a podcast and you're like picking up the living room, your kids are like, mm, nope, I'm going to leave. Yep. yep. Yeah. No, they're scarce, right? They're scarce. <laughs> this. Let's not go there. <laughs> it's like we're out. Um, how do you yep. get your kids to help out with the decluttering? Um, well, I think it's really helpful. A few different things, right? Just like it's, we'll keep this in mind, just like we get easily overwhelmed with keeping up on our stuff they get overwhelmed too. So a lot of times, um, sometimes if you walk into your kid's room or whatever, and it's just like this huge disaster and they're just not taking care of it, it truly could be not that they're not, you know, it might not be that they're trying to just be defiant and not do it. They really might just kind of be stuck. Just like I mentioned that about the laundry room. When I go up there every Wednesday, you know, my kids are my kids are busy, right? Our kids are busy. It's important to recognize that they've got school, they've got sports, they've got friends, they want to have some fun and they should be having some fun and all of that. And so I know that really my two kids who are primarily in charge of kind of keeping the laundry room filtering through their personalities are such that they very easily get overwhelmed if the task is too large. And so when I go up there on a Wednesday, I'm not getting that whole laundry room done, but I'm getting it enough. I'm getting it done enough and to the point where my kids can then pick up the ball and continue running with it. So I think that's a really important thing to, to note, notice and to apply here is to kind of know the personality of your kids, if they, if they need to, if they easily get overwhelmed, you need to make sure that you are doing what you can to keep the job small and manageable so that it doesn't get to that point. Um, Because if it gets to that point, it's really hard. Just like it can be really hard for us as adults to do that. Um, also, Also, another really important thing that I love to talk about with kids is how, just like you talked about your sister, a lot of times just starting that task along with our kids you know, again, it just kind of gets the ball rolling. It, it gets them started. It shows them that, look, we're not going to die if we're doing this, right? <laughs> like it's the working all- beside them too, that they just yeah. like, they don't want to do it alone. Everybody needs that human connection and community. And sometimes just working beside them really helps them out. Mm-hmm. I and like most- you kids have a hard time self-motivating. They just do. That's a learned skill. So they're, you know, you're, you're teaching them that skill at the same time. Yeah. And adults have a hard time of self-motivating. Like, I don't want to go into a messy room. Like I'm like thinking, looking at it being like, oh my gosh, where do I start here? And I think just finding that little one spot, setting that timer, seeing how much you can accomplish it's gold. Yeah. And I think here's a, here's a quick win thing to think about too. Mm -hmm. You just said, if you walk into a room and you say, oh my gosh, where do I even start? That should be your cue. If you're thinking that stop. Don't think that. Stop thinking. Stand down and do something seriously. And you'll realize, oh, I just started the task, right? I kind of call that sneaking up on a task. See, I like that. Buckle in, play danger zone and go for it. I need to to start listening to the, maybe that needs to be what we all do, right? When we all, when we all start decluttering, we need to put on the Top Gun music. Like maybe that, maybe there's something here. It's the connections. Yes, definitely. <laughs> what what do you have coming up, Jennifer, that you're really excited about? Oh, I've got so many things I'm excited about. We, um, in my community, I started doing something um, this year called Accomplished Workshops. And we do them every month. They're always the last Tuesday of the month. And um, they're a quick win workshop, right? And what we do, accomplish um, structure in them. And so I teach them something and then we do it and we work right at the same time. We work on that. And then by the time you're actually done, then you're actually a little bit accomplished with the task. That's awesome. I know you've done one of those for the no guilt mom audience too. You had a workshop and uh, 
we, we love sharing it because you are the decluttering master with everything that you are juggling and, <laughs> and you have, you have the experience. I always look to you for the experience. When I get overwhelmed, I'm like, what would Jennifer do? Ah! <laughs> Well, thank you again for coming on. It is always a joy and I'll talk to you later, of course. You are welcome. Thanks for having me. Bree, I missed you in this conversation. <laughs> Aww. It was such a good conversation too, because I need some serious decluttering help around here. I'm living under just a pile of everything. Yeah. Well, something like Jennifer always tries to tell people is that it doesn't have to look perfect. Her house doesn't look perfect. In fact, she strives to show like there's no such thing as Instagram perfection when you're living with kids. And I think that's good to know because we're all trying to compete. I think with that Instagram ideal, like it should be quote unquote, a certain way. And if it's not that way, we're unhappy because we think everybody else can do it, but it's a lie. Yeah. You know what? It's interesting. I was reading, uh, finding your unicorn space by Eve Rodsky. And there was a quote that stood out. Uh, she interviewed a doctor and she said, so many moms come to her trying to succeed in both their career and at home. And it's impossible to do both at top capacity at once. So they come to her and they're feeling like they're failing and they're less than in some way when it's really an impossible task that we put upon ourselves. Well, we hope you enjoyed our interview with Jennifer and remember the best mom's a happy mom. Take care of you and we will see you later. Thanks for stopping by. Are you looking for something to listen to with your whole family? Then check out Six Minutes, produced and created by Gen Z Media. With over 200 twisty, cliffhanger-filled episodes, Six Minutes tells the story of 11-year-old Holiday who was pulled from the icy waters with no memory of who she is or where she came from. Three years ago, Brinley Pasternak helped the Anders family uncover the truth about Holiday's past. Now she'll need them to help her find the truth about hers. In Six Minutes Out of Time, the long-awaited sequel, Cyrus Anders is found unconscious near the mysterious Elixir Academy in Florida, and Brinley learns the school may have a shocking connection to her missing mother. Dive in now and get the most downloaded family audio adventure in history. Follow Six Minutes wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen early and ad-free with the GZM family subscription.